Hello, I'm Bruce Shane, and today we're going to take a look at making some sounds on a uh, carpenter saw using a homemade bow, and then we're later going to test it on the kaladi plates and see if we can get some patterns on it. So, let's take a closer look. Now, to play a musical saw, there's a few basics that we need. First of all, obviously, we're going to need a saw. I have a larger one and a smaller one, and I actually like this one a little bit better, so we'll start with this one. And some people take this and hold it by hand, and you can do that and simply bend it a little bit and tap on it with your finger and get some sound out of it that way. <laughs> it's always fun. Uh, but let's take it a step further. The next thing you need is a bow, either a violin bow, or in this case I'm using a homemade bow, and to get this to work right, we need to put some rosin on it. So we're going to take this and simply rub, rub it across the string here. And when it goes against the edge of the saw, it's going to cause it to grab and slide. And that's going to set up vibrations in the edge of the saw, and that's going to give us our sound. Now, some people actually hold it with their hand. But I actually prefer this piece here. I think it's called a cheat or a cheater. And this simply hooks onto the end of the saw. It makes it a little bit easier to bend. Now let's take a closer look at how I bend it. The idea is to hold the handle in between the two knees, lock it in place very firmly, bend the main body, and then bend the tip in the opposite direction slightly. If you tap on it with your finger and get a good ring, that's about where you want it. Now I am still learning how to play this, so it's going to be a while before I can play a song. Now you can use a violin bow for this, or you can make one for yourself. Let's see how to do that. Actually I want to start with the handle or the cheat that I'm using. I simply cut out a handle I thought would be easy to hold, and I cut a thin slice into the piece of wood that fits very nicely onto the saw blade. To make the bow, I'm starting with a dowel that's 5 16 inch in diameter. It's about 25 inches long. Here's a holder for the string on one end. And of course I have a second one for the opposite end. I also made a handle out of a bigger piece of dowel and it's simply going to fit over the end of it. And the string is simply fishing line. The two holders for the string simply act as bridges to keep the line up and away from the dowel. They're held in place by friction. They're a tight fit, and it takes a little bit of effort to get them in place. There's the one, and let's put the other one in. The next step is simply to slide the handle on. Well, I think our bow is ready to go. It's now time to add the nylon fishing string in this case, I'm using 8 pound test, and I'm going to start by adding a loop to the one end. I've left a little bit of extra string on the end, and I'm going to use that to secure the string when I'm finished. So I simply attach the string and slide it down to the opposite end, wrap it around the dowel, back to the holder, stretch it down to the other side again, under the holder, wrap it around. I'll repeat this process about a dozen times until I'm ready for the next step. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to bend the bow a little bit just to keep it nice and tight. Okay, I'm going to speed myself up here. I'm going to keep wrapping it back and forth until I have about 40 lines. At this point, I'm going to tie a second loop into that string, once again looping it over the top. There we go. And that extra piece of string that I've added at the beginning 
is now going to be tied onto the extra piece that I have here at the end. And there we go. All right, now that our bow is done, let's apply some rosin to it. I'm going to hold the strings and simply rub this across it. Now, let's see if it works. works pretty good. It takes a little bit of experimentation, but when you find that right spot, it'll actually sing quite nicely. Now I always thought I got more out of an experiment if I built as much of the equipment myself. This bow is working pretty well. Now let's try it with our Kalani plates. Now here's the paint we're going to use today, but in a previous video I showed how to make a homemade driver and hook it up to a computer to generate Kalani patterns using sand. Let's take a look. There's my driver and it's sitting in a tub to catch the sand as it comes off the plates. I can adjust the frequency and get different patterns. Now we've also made the same type of patterns on top of a bucket simply by yelling at it. Hello! Hello! Now the equipment we need for this is very simple. We're going to start with a metal plate. Now through the hole in the center, I'm going to put this bolt. On the opposite side, there's a washer, and here's a nut for it. Let me tighten this down. There we go. Now I'll fasten it real tight using a wrench. That should hold it. Now this bolt's simply going to get threaded onto this wooden bar. I drilled a hole through it. And I'll simply turn this around until the uh, bolt is all the way through the bar. A few more turns. It doesn't have to tighten all the way down. We can see a little bit of gap right here. Now this one's ready to go. I have a slightly smaller one. There it is. And this one's square. It's a little bit smaller. And this one's a little bit thicker material. Now let's anchor this to the table. I'm simply going to uh, use a C-clamp and just bolt it down onto the table and that's going to hold it fast. Now to use the Kaladi plates, we're simply going to sprinkle a little bit of sand on it. And then rosin up the bow by rubbing it against the side of the plate, hopefully we'll get a vibration in it. Now depending on where we rub on the plate, we may be able to get different frequencies, which is going to give us different patterns. Now this experiment was first done by Robert Hooke 
on a glass plate using flour. It was later copied by Ernest Kolodny, who did it on a metal plates demonstrating acoustic standing waves, which formed various patterns which were dependent on the size, shape, density, and the frequency that was applied to the plates. He found that as he rubbed his bow across a plate, certain parts of it would vibrate more than others. The parts with a lot of vibrations were called the antinodes, and the sand tends to be driven out of these areas and settle into the areas where there's less vibrations, and this section is called the nodes. Generally, as the plates are forced to vibrate at a higher frequency, the patterns become more complex. All right, I think it's time to switch plates. Let me give that red one a try. All right, I think it's time to switch plates once more. Let's try the square plate. So as you can see, there's some interesting demonstrations that we can do with sound and frequency and waves. And with a little bit of effort, you can build these pieces and try them for yourself. Okay, as always, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. Bye!